You, uh, you haven't picked on me this time. No, because Jack is here. He did you in pretty good. Oh. <laughs> what, yeah. what did you ask Whatever no. stopped you from ganging up on a guy? Well, I don't want to triple team you. I mean, you know, gee whiz. No, whenever I come out here, I always pick on him, because he's my friend, too, you know. Oh, and yeah? I like to see the little dude win, you know. So I come out and pick on him, and then he has one little punchline, and he'll deliver it, you know, and people say, ah, Gary got him anyway, you know. Yeah. But it can't hurt me. <laughs> Tell him what you were telling me earlier about how Fraser's a palooka with a glass jaw. Yes, yes, I told you that, and I'll say it again. <laughs> that Joe Frazier has a glass jaw. I'll say that, You're but I'm not going to be here when he comes out. <laughs> I knew you were brave. I'm but not going to be here just because I heard you say it. That's right. I wasn't here. I didn't hear a thing. <laughs> you, uh... I, I'm always hearing about things you might have been. First an athlete, and then you thought maybe you wanted to teach, and then... And you wrote that song the band played during the break. You wanted to be a jazz musician one time. Now, that's yes, a new sir. one on me. Oh, no, no, it's not. It may be a new one on you, but that's what... I was very serious about that. Well, I didn't know when that. I, and first of all, once again, everything relates to money. Now, when you come from out of the projects, and yeah. you don't have any money, there's a lot of things that you cannot be. You yeah. know what I mean? Because you don't have the money to do it. For instance, things take lessons. Cost, lessons cost. For yeah. instance, now I'm interested in tennis, but I can afford to pay for the lessons. I can never afford it. So in my neighborhood, to be a tennis player, see, you were a sissy, see? Tennis player, it, violin, any of those things. Anything that cost money was a sissy thing, and it made it all right for you not to be that. Yeah. See, to be a bum to some guys was all right. That was the cool part about it, you know. But I studied took lessons and everything. Lessons cost $2.50. Used to go down to a place called Wurlitzer's. After I shined shoes until I made $3 and I go pay for my drum lessons. And about six of us would go into Wurlitzer's and beat on the man's drums and tell him that our mother was coming tomorrow with the relief check and, and buy a set, you know. So mm -hmm. the guy would let us beat on him. And so this one day, I don't know if you people will understand what I'm talking about, because I'm talking about jazz now. Um, Take a chance. Okay. All right. I, I play the blues. Now, I, I, got, I have these records that I play along with Art Blakey, and I play along with um, Arthur Taylor and Philly Joe Jones, you know. And I'm a teenager, and I'm sitting up in my bedroom with these drums I paid $75 for. A whole set I got from the pawn shop for $75 with cardboard heads, see. <laughs> so I'm beating on these drums, you know, and I'm copying all the licks, Max Roach and everything, and I'm really cool. I'm so cool, I paint the tips of my sticks blue because these are my sticks and I carry them in my back pocket. So at the time, the people like Lee Morgan and Reggie Workman and Archie Shepp, they were all coming on their own as young musicians coming up from Philadelphia. And we have a wealth of musicians. Everybody comes out of Philadelphia, you see. So I went to this place called The Showboat, and they had a matinee going. And I was walking around, and you gotta get this picture of me, because I'm really cool. I am ultra cool. I'm not saying nothing to nobody, but I'm, people wonder when you look cool like that, you must be somebody. And I had my stick sticking out with the blue tips on them. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and they had this session where guys just come up and sit in, you know. And I'm watching, and this dude up there, his name is Mickey Roker, and he's playing, you know, and they're playing everything. Deedly doom, be doom, dee, 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 you know, and the drummer's doing the hit, tag, the pop, the bit, you know. And I'm saying, yeah, I'm doing, I'm listening to what he's playing, and I'm playing what I would have played at the time had I been playing, see. And I'm saying, this cat is not doing it right, man, because I would be cooking up there. I would, he's your pap, pull, pit. Have a brick to snap a brew crack your hat. You pop, you know, and then saxophone player will have to say, wow, you know, and get up. So now finally I get up enough nerve and I go up on the stage because you can sit in, you know, and you all you do, whatever you want to play, you tap the dude and you say, man, yeah, can I sit in? So I went up and I sat down and I'm all ready because that's my groove. It to bang, boo, to bang, boo, be. And I sit down. Yeah. And mind you, I'm very cool. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm very cool. <laughs> See, and I got the, I took the guy's key and I started tuning the drums. 
for myself. I don't know what I'm tuning, but I've seen other drummers do this. You see, tune the drums, and I made a little run. You know, and I'm looking good. Shock, 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 shock. Kick a boom, kick a boom, 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 boom. And the musicians are waiting for me, and I'm Mr. Cool, and I, and I got my tips with the blue, the sticks with the blue tips, you know. Yeah. So I said, oh, I said, oh, all right, you know, because you have to sit cool, you know, I'm sitting like this, you know, because I've seen Alvin Jones sit like that, <laughs> you know. So I'm sitting, and Sonny Stitt, who is, who is, who is your violinist? The fellow Stern, you're taking this part? Isaac Stern. Isaac Stern. Yeah. Sonny Stitt is Isaac Stern of the alto saxophone, all right? So it doesn't make any difference what his name is. Mr. No. Stern of the Alto is coming up. That's, that's good enough. Yeah, and I, I said, oh, well, I said, oh, man, I'm going to play with Sonny Stitt. So he comes and he takes his horn out of case. Now, all the time, they've all been playing, do, do, boom, big, do, do, big, tag, do. So Stitt turns around to the dudes on the bandstand. Now, there's about eight saxophone players on this bandstand. All of them want to take a solo, at least two choruses. There's 12 piano players, <laughs> one bass player, Reggie Workman, and there's about nine trumpets and trombones. All these guys want to take a solo. Stick turns around, he says, let's play some jazz. I'm tired of just the blues. He says, Cherokee. <laughs> now, where and we have been hit the bone, bing, but Cherokee, you have to go, you know, and I had never played that fast before. <laughs> you know, now there's, a, there's your left hand, which you have to synchronize, synchronize and the bass foot, and also the sock symbol, and you have to keep time here, and you want to go... I mean, I've seen Max Roach do it, but Max sits there and he goes... Well, my hands are not in shape like that. So he counted off, he said... One, two, one, two, three, four, five, and I went, and I was doing like this, and I was keeping good time, you know, but I was in a panic, and the whole thing is starting to tighten up here. Meanwhile, the left hand is frozen. <laughs> My left hand is frozen, and I want to do something hip, you see, because that's the hip part of the hand. <laughs> You know, if I can just get it, do that kind of thing while I'm still going. But the dudes in my brain are saying, no, we can't, we can't, we can't handle that. Don't, don't hit nothing down. So I'm going like this. Meanwhile, rigor mortis started to settle in my forehand. But and when your when your hand gets tired, you lose, you can't grab no more. Because these muscles, these muscles here said, we're not playing anymore. <laughs> and they start, so now, instead of doing, now I start hitting with the shoulder. <laughs> I still haven't hit anything on this hand yet. And this foot is frozen, and this leg is just going, I put this on automatic spasm. So I'm going like this, and I got this hand going, and I'm cooking. The bass of the thing is going, it's a rick, 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 and nobody started playing yet. <laughs> so, anyway. so, but my blue tip is flashing, <laughs> and I'm going like this, and they start, ba do do da do de, de, de. and I went, I went to make a hit. Wow! And all of it, bah, do, bah, bah. and then my arm just froze. And I started playing, and I went from to and the guys are playing. Now, this is very embarrassing, because you got a guy blowing on the saxophone, and he said, and all of a sudden, people that I was very cool in front of, I'm now going, <laughs> bam, boom. And the next thing I knew, a stick came up on the cymbal. They say, ring, 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 and the guy came in, and I got up out of the seat, and this guy just sat down there, and he just, and it was Max Roach, you see. Rescued. And Max had rescued me. Yeah. And he's just sitting there doing that thing. Meanwhile, somebody had shoved a lead pipe all the way up. <laughs> my arm here, and I couldn't straighten the thing out. And I just took my sticks, 
put them in my back pocket, <laughs> and went on down to Wurlitzer, you know. And I said to the guy, I want my money back. 